this screencast, we're going to look at how to style a form. And we are going to use some HTML that we looked at in the previous one. And there's three basic ways that we're going to look at styling it. So one is what I'm calling one column, where you simply have uh, right here uh, a single column. It's all down in one line. Uh, and the labels are right above the element that's next to them. And then we have a two column one that is where the text is right aligned. So you see here with that blue line, uh, now we have two columns, uh, meaning that the label is in one column and the values are in the other column and the text in the label column is right aligned. And then the other option is to have the text left aligned. Uh, but these are just three basic ways we're going to see to style your forms. And as you can see, we're doing a, a sort of very basic style just to get the, the sort of spacing and alignment right. And I'm leaving uh, colors and font choice uh, and, and, and widths and things like that largely up to you. I'll give some, some basic examples, but you can obviously change that to fit the style of your site. So let's go here and start with the HTML. So in the last one, we added a contact name with a first name and last name and so it ends up looking like this right now so what we're going to do is we want to add some styles to this to make it look a little bit better so we'll be flipping back and forth between the two and what I'm going to do is actually normally you would uh, link your styles in a separate style sheet but just to be able to look at our HTML and styles together um, I'm going to add a style tag up here, uh, text CSS, uh, like this, and um, use that in order to show our, our styles. Just to sort of see how it looks, I'm going to remove any default padding or margins for our form elements, and so I'm just going to list some of the basic form elements here. So we have form, field set, legend, um, label, input, and we're going to set the padding to zero and the margin to zero as well. Okay, so let's save that and then take a quick look at how it how it is. So that sort of removes any of the default padding on these and then we can add in any padding margin ourselves. So let's look at a next piece that we can do. So I'm going to give the form itself a width. So let's just style the, the form in general and let's give it a width uh, in this case of 500 pixels and obviously uh, you know you would set it to be whatever width you wanted it to be but that sort of there moves makes the form uh, a, a set width that you want it to be. And also just to, to be able to see things and make it a little bit different and see the edges of stuff, I'm going to give it a background uh, color, uh, which you don't have to do, but like I said again, this is um, just for our purposes to be able to see things a little bit better. So I'm giving it a gray color, the E, e is a gray, uh, so we're giving our form a background color there. Okay, and then just to space things out a bit, I'm using a 20 pixel padding. So I'm going to be using 20 pixels around everything here, uh, but what you use would, would depend on your design, if you're you know, using a grid or, or whatever you're using to do it. So that just gives a little spacing around things uh, to work with. Well, one of the next pieces is with what we're doing here with our, our label is something I didn't add last time, but I want to show now. Uh, because it's going to help with how we style things, is uh, we have our label, which has a value of first name, and then we have our input as well. And we want to be able to treat that first name sort of separately as well as an element. So what we're going to do is put a span tag around it. And we don't even have to have any kind of class on it, because we know we can target spans that are inside of a label, and that will target just these spans. So I'm putting a span around both labels here. And some of you may have, who have been looking already may have noticed that the other labels on the page also have spans around them. 
And what we're going to do now is by default, labels and inputs are inline elements. And we want to be able to treat them as block level elements so we can move them around as we want. So we're going to change the label, also the label span. Okay, so by label space span, that's, that's targeting now the span inside of the label. So we're targeting the outer label and the span and the input. And we're also going to add text area because that's the other kind of uh, basic input that we have. And we're going to tell those to display as a block level element. Okay, so let's take a look now at what happens with that. So there we go. We've already actually gotten a lot of the way towards the first kind of layout we want, which is a one column layout. It just moves everything over like that. Uh, and we sort of are, are on well on our way with just a couple styles here to having that one column layout. So, uh, right now it's a little bit to the, to the left there. So I'm going to style my field set and give that a padding as well. We're going to give it a padding of 20 pixels. And we notice here, you might have noticed now that our submit button down at the bottom uh, hasn't moved because it's not inside of a field set. We decided to leave that one outside of the field set. So if I want to have that over the same 20 pixels, what I'm going to do is let's look at how we can target just that. So by giving it an ID of submit, um, I can now target just that submit button to give it its own extra padding um, on the left, really margin on the left in this case, um, to match the 20 pixels that we have on padding on the field input submit margin left because we really don't need a margin all around just that left margin to push it in to align it 20 pixels so let's refresh this and there we go so a few more styles one one of the things that we want to be able to do is to <coughs> excuse me style our um, label so that it ha they are spacing between them. So right now, there's sort of like th this last name is really crammed up next to the input for first name. I'm actually going to apply this before the other input that we did. Uh, and I want to give them a margin bottom. And I'm going to say 20 pixels. Okay, and so now what we get is some nice spacing between first name and last name. Now, we have sort of a double space now between the last element and the bottom of the field set because there's a 20 pixel padding um, here on the field set and then there's a 20 pixel margin on the bottom there. So what we can do actually for that is just on the field set itself not have padding on the bottom. Uh, it's going to be 20 pixels, that's the top, right, bottom, and left. So I could do something like that, and then now uh, our field set would have sort of a more equal amount of spacing between each of the elements if you, if you like it like that. So actually, at this point, you have a nice basic form here that you can submit. It's, it's got you know your field sets and so forth. I might actually, looking at this, my field sets look a little close to each other as well, so I might... Um, add a, a little more to my field set. So let's break this down so we can see it a bit better. So I'm going to add a margin bottom to my field set as well of 20 pixels. I add that margin and now I have, they're a little bit more spaced out. So I'm going to leave that as, as it is and we're going to move to breaking this into a two column layout. Uh, and the way I'm going to do that just to sort of save a little bit of time is I'm going to copy this style sheet uh, here and paste it in, and then I'm going to comment it out. So uh, you can you can do this in a separate style sheet if you like. Uh, I'm going to do this here just to be able to also uh, compare them to each other. So for the first one, I'm uh, you know, and you would pick one of these. Uh, open the comment there, close it there. So now. Um, I have a second style sheet that we can apply separately. And we're going to style both the label span, right? That's where we have our actual labels uh, text. And on that, and we're going to say float left.
right, so we already have it displaying as a block. We're going to do float left, and I'm going to give it a width, in this case, of 150 pixels. Okay, and again, your width would depend on, on what you're doing. So let's do that, and then I'm going to give uh, the input also a float left. In that, we're going to give a width of 275 pixels. We have our contact information, uh, in, you know, in in the sort of a, a two a, a two column uh, left and right here. Uh, we have something going on here with mobile phone. We'll have to take a look at that and see what's going on with with that. But there we go. And you also notice, by the way, now that we have some uh, another interesting thing going on, whereas the uh, on the field set here we lost some of the padding at the bottom as well. One thing I'm going to do here is in the label, let's go and we're going to add some more styles to the label. Uh, oops, uh, have to do it here. And we're going to add some styles that are going to help make this work out a little bit better. <clears throat> we have our margin bottom, and I'm going to give it now an overflow. And you can do it uh, either way you want. You could do auto or hidden. Um, auto means if you do overflow auto, that if the text, the content inside of it is too big, it gives it scroll bars. And hidden means it'll just cut off any content that's too too big for it. But, but since we didn't give this a height, uh, it's just going to expand anyway. And so this is another way in s outside of a clearing div that if you have a, a block level element, in this case we made our label block level element, that contains other block level elements that have been floated um, to l make itself expand to fit those. So let's take a look uh, at what we're do how it looks here. And so when we put that overflow auto in, we get our padding and so forth back, and now mobile phone is in place. So that's the basics there of our two column form. Now you obviously the submit button here we got to do something with. It is an input, so it got the same width as everything else. So I would I could go in here into my submit, and I could start adding some more styles to that as well, and making it uh, width, let's say 75 pixels. And we would add, we can add some styles into the submit button, and now I have actually a lot more spacing here. Um, in addition to the 20 pixels, I have the 150 pixels of the label span now. So that's uh, 150 plus 20, so that's a 170 pixels. I would need to move it over. Uh, and, and if I wanted to keep it in line with the elements here, so often that's a, a common thing people do is wherever you're typing in, then the submit is is right underneath those. Now let's say I wanted the text to be aligned the other way, so to be right aligned, uh, we we can take a look at that. So, um, oh by the way, I gave the input a width of 275 pixels. Uh, I didn't do anything to the text area, so if I want the text area to match, sorry, before I go into the other things, I would also give the text area the same width. And now you see this text area didn't wasn't quite the same width and I refresh here and now it's the same width as everything else. That's for the the text area. Uh, let's l align this thing to the right. So basically what it is is in the label span I can do text align right. And that gives me my basics, although obviously that's a little bit too close for comfort. We don't want it quite that close to our other elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the label span um, a margin right. And I'm using margin, not padding, because basically when you want to separate two elements out, which is what we want to do here, generally your first bet is to use margin. So there we go. I want to separate those two out a little bit more. I'm going to say margin right and my default 20 picks for this example. And there we go. Now we have one that is right aligned. And so just to go back there and, and, and show this to you again. So uh, pretty much the same as the, as the last one. Uh, we just had to come in and, and add the floats and the widths, uh, text align in this case, and overflow hidden, and then styling on your submit buttons if you so choose and you want to style those. And there we have uh, a couple different ways of doing a basic form.